Hello, welcome or welcome back, my favorite movement enthusiast, to today's session of hip mobility follow along, where, as the name suggests, we will be working on our hip mobility as well as our knee and ankle mobility, going through exercises that build a lot of strength, a lot of coordination and flexibility around our hips and every single muscle group included in hip mobility so we can keep them healthy as well as advance all our skill requiring exercises like heavy squats, like getting into a pancake fold, like doing front splits, whatever you can think about that requires hip mobility, strength and health. We will work on that today and we will do it systematically and together. So if you're ready, let's go and have some fun. Now, as usual, we will be starting with the easiest exercises first, and some of these will become very exhausting and a little bit more advanced. So work at your own pace. If you can keep up the same speed that I do, just slow it down. If I'm too slow, move faster. You can pause the video whenever you feel like. So let's get started. For our first starting position, we will sit down and we will try and stay as upright as possible in our upper body. If you don't have the strength in your core and hip flexors to do so, then you can lean back, of course. First exercise, very easy. Pull in that leg and extend. Pull in that leg and extend. For now, we will be working on our hip flexors and basically all the exercises we will be doing will be dynamic exercises. Pull in and extend, pull in and extend. Most of the exercises we are doing, we will be aiming for 30 seconds to a full minute, depending on the difficulty of the exercise and the benefit. So we have a couple of seconds more of this one, pull in and extend. And one more time for the right side, just so we stay symmetrical and done. Moving on to the next exercise. Once again, you can lean back if you need to. We will keep that leg fully extended, pull our toes in actively and start raising that leg in a completely extended level. Try and keep your knee completely straight and pull those toes in so you can work a little bit on our flexibility while we're working on our quadriceps and hip flexor strength as well as our lower abdominals. So you're starting to notice everything that surrounds our hips will be work today and it will be fun. Up and down and up and down, up and down. We've got 10 more seconds for this exercise. We're almost there. Another five, four, three, two, one, and done. Moving on from just flexion, we will pull in our leg, push the knee down and reverse the movement. Pull in, push out and reverse. Now we have not only the flexion part, but some external rotation in our hip joint as well. And having to stay upright in your upper body with all the exercises where our legs are extended in front of our body will require not only core, but hip flexor strength as well. So we can work on that simultaneously. Just try and push your back all the way through, push your chest out and go through the entire movement pattern. Pull in, push out and extend, pull in, push out and extend. We've got three more repetitions. Once for the right side, left side, and final time for the right side and done. And since we've been going through a lot of hip flexion, we will switch it up just a little bit before we come back to it. Once again, hands on the floor and we will push up into a reverse tabletop position like so before we push our pelvis all the way to our heels and then extend. So we're pushing towards our heels. We are pushing up. We are flexing our posterior chain, stretching our quads and hip flexors a little bit, activating our hip extensors before we move all the way back. So we've got a handful of repetitions more here and you can either slow it down and hold statically at the highest point or you can work dynamically with all of these exercises. You can do most of them statically as well and you can work dynamically if that is what you prefer because that is what I prefer. Final two repetitions, reverse tabletop and back into our starting position, reverse tabletop back into our starting position and we're gonna hold our legs extended and raised 
for 10 seconds as a finisher. You can even pull your toes in, lengthen your gastroc, your soleus, your Achilles tendon, and the higher you go with your legs, the more stretch we will have in our hamstrings. Another three, two, one, and done. We even did 15 seconds. Now our first starting position change is just going to be opening those extended legs and you can either have your hands in the middle for support or if you want to work a little bit more on your own quadriceps, hip flexor and core strength then just keep your hands away or behind your head. We're going to raise on one side and then dynamically move towards that foot. How far you can go is totally dependent on your mobility. But even if it's just a very short movement, like so, or even if you're already feeling a stretch here and you can barely move forward, you can just raise it for a centimeter or two, that's totally fine. Over time, we'll get better. So it's up, down, and pull in. For now, we'll try and stay parallel with our upper body to the ground. So try not to turn your upper body away. Elevate and go parallel before you elevate the other side and then go parallel. Now, if you've done all of the last exercises without a break or with short breaks, then your quads and your hip flexors are probably already getting a little bit of a nice endurance and strength related workout. There you go. We have a handful more repetitions all the way to the left, all the way to the right. Repeat one more time for either side. And next exercise. Now for this one, we will start with both hands behind our head. We'll try and move as low as possible to the middle. Now, as I said, your own range of motion is your own reference point. Don't think about what I'm doing. Try to fold forward as much as we can. And now we're gonna go into rotation. Bring your left elbow to your left knee and open up your chest, lengthening your lats, your obliques, and the side of your legs before we move down parallel to the ground and then open to the right side. All the way down, open to the left, and you should feel a nice little stretch in your posterior chain starting at your Achilles tendon once you pull in your toes, moving up your gastroc, soleus, your biceps, your glutes, and even your lumbar and thoracic spine, especially in the rotation. We're working on rotational spinal mobility while working on our posterior chain stretch and our hip extensor stretch for our glutes left side dynamically, right side dynamically, go lower to the ground with every repetition, left side, right side, and one more time to the right, one more time to the left, back to the middle, and now pull yourself down actively with your quads and with your abs as much as you can for three, two, one, and release. Now, increasing the level of intensity a little bit more, we will work symmetrically by raising and then by opening up our arms and moving to the middle before we reverse and repeat again. Once again, if this is as high as you can go, totally perfect. If this is as far as you can go forward, totally perfect. If you can't even do that, just sit down with a wall behind your back and if you're already feeling a stretch by sitting with a wall behind your back and your legs extended, then you're already working on your flexibility. Both up, upper body down. Both up, upper body down. And we're gonna do only three more repetitions, but we're gonna hold for three, two, one, and three, two, one. Once again, three, Pull those toes in, two, one, and three, two, one. And up, strengthening the anterior chain, and down, stretching the posterior chain. For three, two, one, and up. And it's time for our next starting position change. We are sitting on our foot 
with our upper body upright and one leg completely extended in front of our body. Now the thing with the starting position is we're already requiring a lot of mobility in our ankles and we require a little bit more mobility in our knees as well. So if you're struggling with that and you have pain in any of your joints or pain in general, then what you can do is elevate your right butt cheek if your right leg is extended. And this way we can take the pressure of our ankle, of our knee and try and work a little bit more on the flexibility and strength part separately. If you don't have a problem, then take this away because we will switch from an upright seated position into a lunging position, lengthening our hip flexor on the left side, strengthening our entire posterior chain by pushing forward, working on our ankle, knee and hip mobility. And then we will push back, sit down all the way and raise that leg for just a second. So move forward, lunging position, reverse and elevate you're going to require a lot of core strength to balance yourself out so you don't fall over which is an amazing bonus to have when working on your hip flexors and your hip mobility in general elevate push forward and elevate and push forward just three more repetitions lengthening our hip flexor on the left strengthening our hip flexor on the right lengthening on the left strengthening on the right pushing forward strengthening the posterior chain pushing back and elevating strengthening the anterior chain and it's time to switch legs extend the left leg sit on the right leg and push forward all the way reverse and elevate push forward reverse and elevate. Now on the right side, I have to be very careful with my right knee. I had a meniscus injury just a couple of months ago. It's healing pretty well, but sometimes it flares up and I need to be careful, especially when I'm doing exercises that put a lot of pressure on my knee. So if you struggle with anything similar, just be careful, maybe slow down a little bit and try and focus more on a controlled and slow movement instead of a more explosive or dynamic one. We've got three more repetitions for the left side as well, because then we've done a full minute for each side. Push forward, elevate, and final rep, push forward and elevate. Now, just before we go on to the next exercise, I just wanna show what a shorter movement for lack of mobility would look like. We would just start out here, push forward into the semi launch push backward and try and fold forward as much as we can. It might be this is the end of our range of motion. And when pushing forward, it might be that this is the end of our range of motion. Totally fine. We just need to go through the movements. And we've gotten to our final starting position pose, which will be a resting squat or a deep squat, which already requires a lot of hip mobility. So if the exercises we've done before helped you getting into this position, amazing. If you notice your heels are raising, then you probably need to work a little bit more on your ankle mobility. If you cannot stay upright, then chances are your core is a little bit too weak or you don't have enough flexibility to sit with your upper body a little bit more forward. So you need to work on your posterior chain as well as your hips a little bit more when it comes to opening and we will do that later so starting out right here we have internal rotation for our knee before we reverse and switch to the other side internal rotation internal rotation left side right side you notice we're working on our ankles we're working on our knees on our hips on our core strength to keep us upright on our coordination by working asymmetrically and on our endurance because we've been working for like 10 minutes and i'm sweating like balls left side right side the more upright you stay the more strength you will require and the more balance you are building we've got two more reps one for the right one for the left and next exercise. From internal rotations to external rotation, push your knee out and then your hips forward, lengthening your quads and hip flexors, strengthening your glutes and then reverse into the deep squat before you move to the left side. Push forward, lengthen, extend the other leg, sit back and reverse. Sit back and 
reverse. You can work dynamically, you can slow it down right here, push forward and hold. You can pause the video at any moment. And you can try and do two rounds after the whole workout is done if you feel like it. Now this workout routine is perfect for people who want to work on their strength, endurance and flexibility for their hips either before a workout because we're working a lot with the strengthening part or right after a workout or even on your free days just add it to your mobility repertoire. Final repetition for the right side and reverse into our starting position for the next exercise. And for this one, we will increase our range of motion in the movement as well as combining internal with external rotation. Sit fully upright before you put your leg up on the left, put your leg up, rolling over your toes on the right and then internal rotation from the left and internal rotation from the right. Lengthen your tibialis, lengthen your ankle into ankle extension before we move into ankle flexion once more. Internal rotation from the knee and the hip, external rotation on the other side, reverse and reverse. Requires a lot of strength in your hip flexors and your quads, requires a lot of coordination for the asymmetrical movements and will build insane amounts of endurance in those muscles in your legs because we are working with a lot of strength requirements for a longer period of time. All the way and all the way. We've got two more repetitions for this one. Turn all the way to the left and turn all the way to the right. And reverse into our starting position for our final exercise for today. Now, we only have four repetitions with this one, but we will slow it down a little bit and you already know half the exercise, internal rotation in your right leg. Roll over your toes, external rotation in your left leg. Now we're gonna add lumbar and thoracic rotation for our back and we're gonna move our face all the way down to the ground, lengthening our quads, lengthening our hip flexors, and our obliques as well. Press down and keep both knees fully on the ground before you slowly come up again, come up again and again and switch directions. Internal left leg, external right leg, upper body all the way to the right side, face to the ground for five, four, three, two, one, up. Final two repetitions. Internal right, external left, face to the ground for five, three, two, one, up and come on. Final repetition. Left to the inside, right to the inside, upper body to the right, face to the ground for five, four, three, two, one, and up into our deep squat position for our finisher move. Pull those shoulders in as much as you can. Open those arms sideways. Bring your chin all the way down to your chest, rounding your back, going into spinal flexion, and use your arms to actively pull your legs backwards to open up the inside of your hips even more. And we're gonna hold for 10. Deep breaths. and release. And now that we're all loose and limber, we can go for our testing. Let's test out our pancake fold, moving both hands to both feet and bringing our upper body as closely down to the ground as we can. All the way, push that chest down, push that head down. It seems like I'm pretty close. My chest is already touching the ground. My belly is not right now, but over time, I think the hinge in my hip is supposed to get better and we will be able to get down all the way into a pancake fold. So let's check the front split. Now that we're really limber, push that leg forward and you can open your hip sideways to get a little bit deeper into that front split before you start turning your hips forward once more and extending your upper body pushing your hips down. Now, I'm still 
missing a little bit of hip mobility to turn fully parallel to the wall in front of me, but it's, it's okay, it's getting there. As for bending into a forward fold in the front split, it's going pretty well. My hamstrings, as well as my posterior chain in general, is pretty flexible compared to my hip flexors, at least on the right side. And there you have it, a full hip mobility follow along that focuses on strength, it focuses on endurance, as well as flexibility and coordination, putting all those four things together to produce mobility. Now, for best results, two to three times a week would be absolutely amazing. Heck, if you could do it every day, most of the advanced things that we showed, like the front split and the deep squat and everything would become so much easier. So try and do that as often as you can. It takes like 15 minutes, maybe 20, if you take breaks in between. But with that said, sadly, that's all the time I have left for you today. However, if you like the video, like the video and subscribe and check out other videos on this channel because we literally have new ones every single day. I'm not even joking. So until tomorrow, Captain Cairo, peace out.